Hi, this is Charlie Montotoyello with Blue Bear Flutes, our website bluebearflutes.com, which is probably where you find me half the time, and then the rest of the time it's usually on our YouTube channel, which is of course youtube.com forward slash bluebearflutes, probably where you're watching this video. Although today we do stretch out on some other social media forums and uh, have, you know, everything from a Reddit to a, um, let's see what else, Instagram is probably our biggest one and uh, occasionally you can find us on Facebook. If you wanna see pictures of some of the things we do and have some real short little videos and what have you, Instagram's a good place to check out. And then of course our YouTube channel here, we have hundreds of videos on making and playing Native American flutes. We have some information on our old amplifiers and not to confuse that with our new Blue Bear Flutes um, amplifier here. This one is our newest model. Uh, it was uh, started production in 2022 and it is the one that we're currently using right now. And probably just about any time you see this video is probably gonna be the same one. Today's video is just about some mic placement and some adjustment type of stuff to kind of help out. Um, a lot of people wanna know how to attach a microphone to their Native American flute. And there are numerous different ways to do that. I've got videos on doing that with other amps and they pretty much are the same idea. Um, with the new amp, it's still, again, a very simple factor. You have a wireless microphone, and the wireless microphone, the biggest problem I had originally run into is that in my old days, I used to hot glue a piece of Velcro to the back of it, but the uh, hot glue doesn't stick to this particular kind of plastic. It's like a higher quality plastic, so it's, uh, it's not something that hot glue, regular hot glue would stick to. So I use some E6000, and I'll tell you about that in just a second. But the first thing you wanna know how to do is if your headset and your microphone are together in the box, you want to know how to take these two things apart because they're made to come apart and go back together anytime you want to. It's real simple. There's an oval plastic piece right here that's part of the head strap, and then you have the microphone, and you just grab one and slide it down like that, and slide the other one up, and that's really it. You can put it back on and it'll snap back into place. But if you pull this part where the microphone is facing down like this, if you pull this downward real gently, it's not a whole lot of force whatsoever. And then if you line them up, you can see there's two pieces over here and one piece right there. And there's three slots in the back. Um, you just line them up and then push it up and that's it. If you notice, I did that and my Velcro is still on. Uh, the Velcro doesn't get in the way of my head as if I need something to amplify my voice, right? Um, but anyway, if you decide you want to use it that way, or if you're a harmonica player and you find that this is the best way to make it uh, work for your harmonica, we've had a lot of people tell me about that and a couple of other instruments that seem like use it in that particular fashion. They just put the head strap around their neck and then this here stays positioned just about wherever you want it. It makes me feel like I'm Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> Anyway, um, so if you, uh, if you unsnap this guy, set this down, because like I said, the way that we're talking about this today, you won't need it. Um, then, to show you what I did, I took a, a one inch square of double-sided Velcro. Now you don't have to do that, and something else that works really well is a package of Velcro. They just call it hook and loop. I guess Velcro is actually the brand like anything else, Kleenexes and gosh, we've been telling our son about those nostalgic ideas of your uh, Coke. You know, some people call sodas a Coke, especially here in the South, we do that. Um, but anyway, you can cut you a piece of the, the Velcro and the part of the Velcro that I would recommend using to attach to the microphone is the part that is fuzzy here. So if you have a double-sided piece, cut you one inch of that and put your adhesive on the spiky side, uh, the hook side, and then the fuzzy side you want to be poking outward. And I'll show you the reason we do that, but this stuff here being self-adhesive, I mean that's really a good solution. Um, if you find that this self-adhesive works good, let me know. Leave a comment in the middle of the, the uh, video here. Please let me know that, uh, you know, hey, this stuff worked good for me. I think it's a good solution because you can just kind of cut this off. And you've got a bunch of pieces, so after a year or two, if it gets kind of loose and coming off, no harm, no foul. You can just rip it off and put a new one on. Um, like I said, the E6000 is better for me because I know I'm going to be pretty rough with it, taking it on and off. Um, here it is attached to the side of one flute, and then you can take that off 
and attach it to the side of another flute just that quick. So if you haven't seen it, I actually have a video where I'm down at my, my pond and I'm playing a song and in the middle of the song I change flutes with this microphone um, and uh, well actually with one of my other microphones and it really uh, it did a number on it. So I'm going to show you some things about position and playing and also a real good little tip uh, kind of a trick if you would to save you some trouble in case something happened that you you find that your flute is too loud or if it uh, has one tone on the flute that is just a little different than the others. We'll talk about that in just a second. But Mic placement, you'll need to check that yourself. Honestly, sometimes in the front here is good and I've got it about two inches away from the flute. That's like 50 millimeters away from the front of the flute from the sound hole here. The good thing about doing it like that is that you get some of the actual sound of the flute. It's not all coming out of the, the amp and you get the sound out of the amp, including the echo. In a studio, that's kind of how we mix things. We don't always put 100%, they call it wet when you have uh, effects on a sound. Uh, we don't put 100% of the effect on the flute when we're recording flute music. We usually put it like, depending on where you're at, what you're doing really, but anywhere from 20% to 65, 80%, something like that would be quite a bit. So this keeps you from hearing just the amplifier, you can hear the flute as well. Now, if you're in a venue and you're walking around and you want people to hear from this area, then that's one thing to consider. Of course, there is a shoulder strap so you can hang it on your body and it, and it it's, I guess I would say more natural feeling like um, the sound is coming from the flutist rather than distance away. Now, there may be a reason why you want to do that. If you've got a little toy bear sitting up and he's playing the flute, can't say I've done that before, and you want to play it and make it sound like it's coming out of him. Um, but anyway, about two inches away from the sound hole is good. If you have a pretty totem like this one, you don't want it in the way of the totem, that's why I recommend putting it over here on the side. And you can cut it down a little bit. Like I said, this is something you have to kind of fiddle around with. And then once you get it how you want it, you can turn the volume up just a little bit if that's not too loud. Now something you may have heard in there just now, there was a little click noise and that's because the sound of the echo is somewhat stumbling over itself from the microphone's intensity being a little too much. One thing, I'm going to tell you three things you can do to, to help fix that. You can click it down a notch. This is like uh, really turning the microphone itself down. So if you've got a backing track playing, you can turn this down. It doesn't affect the volume of the backing track, but if your flute was overpowering, you can turn that down. But it also um, turns down how much uh, that this unit is actually picking up. And with that, it actually helps quite a bit to get away any of those harsh sounds because this microphone is super sensitive, honestly. Um, if I wasn't controlling the amount of, of sound and air I'm using, I would want to move it like a little further away. But since I control it and, and have a little better accuracy with my playing, I, I like to keep it right there. Now, some flutes, I'll tell you, like this E, for example, the um, third fingering on this E from this distance, I've played for 35 years, almost 36 now. From this distance, it still picks up this note in such a way that it'll try to stumble over itself. And the reason being is the frequency range of that note is actually very similar to the frequency range of the little pickup inside of the microphone here. And so it makes it vibrate. This will happen with any microphone. I've had other mics that had similar issues and we've talked about this, but it's just, it's the fact that you're playing loud and high into a microphone that moves and vibrates. I'm going to try to make it do it, so forgive me if you hear an off sound.
like that inside of the, the microphone. If that causes a problem for you, something else you can do, which I really like to solve problems the easy way if I can, I cut a couple of little discs of paper. These discs are about three eighths of an inch in diameter. And I just put them inside of the microphone sock, the wind sock here. And that, if you keep them flat down inside of the bottom of this thing, it's not really as hard as I make it look. Um, but if you do that, you can figure out how many of these you need to put in there so that you still get the, the excellent um, features of having a wind sock on your flute, which you, you kind of need. It helps to, to keep some of those rough sounds away too because you'll get some air sounds if you're not careful. Um, but you can put that on there and then put the mic back inside of it. Y'all remember my first video on this amp. I struggled a little bit getting the sock back on, but that's probably because either my fingers were cold or I'm getting old. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Just strap this back on the side of it real easy. And then after that, let's see where we're at. Turn this volume back up. produces one tone that will cause the microphone to reverberate inside of itself um, and honestly since the direction of the air is coming out this way I really prefer to keep the mic on the side and some of you may not have big hands enough my hands are medium-sized hands uh, may not have hands large enough to keep the mic underneath of your palm like I do this is convenient in a lot of ways because it hides the mic. So if you want, you can actually turn this guy around and move this right back up here. The convenience of that positioning neck, which I really love. Um, you can also, as I showed in my first video, Velcro it down if you get it right where you want it and strap a piece of Velcro onto the neck of the, the microphone. That'll really help to keep it where you want it. Um, because I'm gonna be taking it off and putting it back on, I'm not gonna do that and also, I find it convenient to be able to use my hand sometimes to, to keep the position of the neck. So it just depends on what's convenient for you. It is really easy to use. It's not something that you have to, uh, to concern yourself with. And also, if you think about it too, you could put it on the other side and now my hand's completely free of the position of the microphone. Turn it up a little bit. using other microphones with this unit. Um, that's something I like to do as well. I have shown in other videos, and you can go back and watch any of those that, that are available, about using a lapel mic, which is kind of convenient. I like the gooseneck mic because it's so so versatile with so many other flutes that I can put it on. Even a, uh, if I want to put it on a drone, I can put it on the side of the drone where it's out of the way of my hand and then stretch the, the gooseneck over there to where I need it. But if you have like a lapel mic, something I showed in the past is you can leave a, quite a bit of Velcro on your flute and then put a little loop in it like that and you can click the lapel mic, just clip it right on there and slide it up here to where you want it. Um, there's convenience in that. However, like I say, this is the one that I really have settled on. I like it a lot. It's, uh, and I say settled on, I mean natural environments, playing in a cave, playing in a canyon. Uh, safely is something that I really enjoy doing. I almost say I recommended doing, but I don't want anybody to get hurt playing in a cave or a canyon. I'll never forget that cave that I had walked, um, you know, I think we were about five miles up into this cave and we had to come back and find our way with a pin light that we had. It was the only flashlight that was left after we exalted all the batteries. That was the first album I re ever recorded. It was called Cave Blessings. It's not available. It's a waste of your time probably looking it up. Uh, but I'll never forget, my dad was there with us 
and uh, I had another flute player friend. Actually, my cousin I had mentioned before that helped me get started on my path of flute making, um, which he, of course, doesn't make flutes anymore. Um, but uh, it was just kind of a fun thing, I think, for a minute for him and for me. It's become my lifelong journey. But uh, but like I said, there's there's uh, a lot to be thought of of natural environments. One thing I should have mentioned too is when you put this double-sided Velcro down the way I like to use it, if you use double-sided, now you can get single-sided that is uh, adhesive. I don't want to put any adhesive on my flute. You can put that on a piece of cloth fabric though and just wrap it around and find a way to adhese it that way. For me, this double-sided stuff is really the way to go. Um, I put the soft side down, so if you have one of those flutes with those really expensive fancy finishes that I had a customer messaging me the other day about how she was sanding off. Of course, the reason I don't use those because it's not sound. Anyway, um, if you have one of those flutes, the soft side of the Velcro shouldn't hurt your flute. And uh, like I say, you can put it down, wrap it around. When you do, that leaves the spiky side up. Now this stuff, I always call it spiky. It's just, I guess my uh, 1970s and 80s mentality of how we describe things. but. The rough side of the Velcro is up, and that leaves the soft side that we had connected earlier to our microphone ready to snap it on right there. And it holds really well. It might wobble a little bit, but geez, I mean, it's, that's really pretty, pretty stout in my opinion. Uh, so like I say, positioning of the microphone is key. If you find that your flute produces a tone, it's usually one tone. I notice this G makes one tone, this E makes one tone. Um, but if you find your flute produces one tone that causes the microphone or any microphone, as I say, to reverberate, then you want to um, move it away a little bit. You could probably move it away even further and then turn the gain or the, the mic up on this. But I noticed before when I did that, you could hear the pads of my fingers touching the flute. And that's distracting to some people, at least it has been in my experience. So I turn the gain down and uh, move it a little bit closer, use breath control, volume control, um, and I put the couple of pieces of paper in there, like I say, just a couple pieces of regular old, you know, writing paper of any kind, and, and that really helps to deaden the sound. If you've had some other experiences, other ideas, uh, like I say, put them in the comments. Everybody enjoys sharing uh, these ideas and comments, and you may have one that I've not thought of. Like I said, I've been playing forever, but that doesn't mean I've got all the answers. Uh, I do have a lot of answers though, so if you email me and ask me a question, usually I refer you to a video that I've got. Just to cut out that middleman and save you five minutes of emailing, and maybe me as well, uh, feel free to check out our other videos. Uh, they're always there for you, and of course, uh, you know, we do like to answer questions, and I usually in the comments on YouTube, I get a notification, I'm like, yep, that's what I do, or nope, never tried that before, or yes, I've seen that, or no, I haven't, that's a crazy idea. Be careful, you know, I'm always trying to put out some kind of positive anything. Don't get hurt. <laughs> anyway, um, I hope this video has found you well. I hope I've answered all your questions about placing this microphone and any other microphone. Uh, like I say, there is a slot on the side that you can use to put another 3.5 millimeter plug mic if you want to use a different microphone. This one I love. It works great for me. It has quite a bit of range. I haven't really tested it. Most people say it's a, like 100 yards or something. I don't think it's quite 100 yards. It's probably more like 100 feet. Um, but uh, it's a great microphone, very sensitive. One of my friends uh, that does recording actually uses this microphone because of how sensitive it is. Uh, you can also hold it like a, a baton there too. Anyway, uh, you guys take care. This is Charlie Matatuyela. If you have questions about flute making or flute playing, please check out my other videos on YouTube here. If you wanna see some beautiful stuff, look at our Instagram, check out our website. We're always, uh, you'll find the greatest Native American flutes available on the web. And we hope that you've enjoyed this and have a great day. Take care.